What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course special live stream. We're looking at a bit of cool gear. Today, we're taking a look at the Yesu FTDX10. Just showed up in the United States, and it's a pretty cool looking radio so far. Haven't had it for that long, but let's go ahead and take a look. And again, hey, thanks for coming on out to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Appreciate it. Appreciate you stopping by and checking out what we're doing. But you don't want to see my face. You want to see the FTDX. So let me go ahead and throw that over here. All right. So I'll, I'll hit up the, the big stuff right up front. I'll turn it off, and I'll show you the dimensions of it and what kind of connections you have in the back. Uh, right up front, I, I saw a comment earlier that said it is the same size, roughly, as a 7300. That's kind of true. It's a little bit shorter and a little bit wider. Uh, so there's that. All right, let me turn it off for a second, and I'll show you the uh, dimensions here. Okay, and big thanks to uh, Ham Radio Outlet for letting me uh, take a look at this. Um, I, I realized they had one. I said, hey, how's it going? <laughs> so, all right, uh, let me throw it over the overhead, and I'll, I'll give you a bit of the over-the-top look at it. Here we go. <clears throat> all right, hello, everybody. Thanks for coming on out. I do have a mic uh, stand connected to it as well, so we'll be able to hear some audio out. It's about good that I can uh, I can get it. My understanding is, yes, it is in stock. Um, that is That is what I understand, but you'll have to check with your local... HRO for sure. Okay, so I'm going to hold it because I don't want it to sit on its connectors. But here is, let's go ahead and see if I can focus this in. Don't mind my fingerprints. Little tall, it's a little tall for my uh, camera. So let me flip it over and show you the ports on the back. There are RIDI data connection, tuner connection, ground antenna. You got an RST32 serial. And then over on this side, you've got both a USB-B and two USB-As with an external monitor connection, which is pretty cool. And then you got your hookup for an external speaker, your key, and a linear. So a little bit extra ports on here. Well, not extra, but gives you a little bit of more capability. Speaker is out the top of the radio, which I guess you'd expect. And the connector is the standard Yesu style here for the power. I'll get it back on. I'll give you a quick dimension check on it. It is a little over 10 inches, 10 and a quarter inches by from fan to the the longest part of the VFO. It's about 12 inches. If you're going from case to back, it's a little over 10 and a quarter. And it stands about stands about three and a half inches high, and that's case measurements. That's not uh, for the offsets or the rubber feet or the kickstand on the back. Okay, so there you go. Oh, you know what? While we're here on the overhead, it comes with this manual, and uh, this is a really good manual. Uh, this is really really nice. They did a good job on this. Um, there's your data connection. Oh, I'll cover this as well. Yeah, um, you can use this remote. We were very curious about this when we first heard about it. They do sell a device. It's this SCU LAN 10 device for doing, uh, for doing remote internet. But you don't need that. You can connect directly to a computer, which uh, is later in the manual. There's a shot of the back of it. Pretty good on the... Uh, on the manual, I must say. So compliments to Yesu on that one. Very good. Okay, let's get back to the front for the the upfront goodness of the radio. Wait, uh, let's see. I want to double check. I've got everything connected. All right. I'll take the connector here for the microphone, connect it. 
And here's the hand mic. Hand mic has four P1, P3, P1 through P4 buttons. It's got up and down controls for frequency, PTT button, and a mute button. Does that work? Let's see. Push button mute. You gotta hold it down, momentary. And for those curious, um, let me let me go ahead and mention some of the details up front here. Uh, first, it is on the uh, HR website, selling for sixteen ninety nine ninety five. That's in the states. Your price is going to vary if you're outside the states. I'm getting some mad lighting there. That'll fix that. And uh, to give a little bit of detail on it, kind of similar to the FTDX 101, this is a hybrid SDR, meaning that it is a narrow band SDR, and then there's a direct sampling wider SDR for what's giving you that um, that view of the spectrum display little bit different a uh, little bit the way Yesu is doing it is a, is a bit different from some of the other manufacturers so here you go back to that let me get it in focus okay okay so let me make sure we're lit too because you're gonna need to see these controls as I go through them otherwise this is gonna be a little little confusing I will say though that uh, at, even though I haven't spent much time with it it's pretty straightforward controls the advantage of the touch screen and the way they have everything laid out everything's not everything but a lot of things are based off of that function button this function combo button slash dial uh, control uh, we'll, we'll get into it I'll show you right now we won't we won't belabor this we'll go straight into it and we'll do it quick and dirty because there's a lot to cover I promise there's a lot to cover <laughs> okay so you're looking at you're looking at the radio it's turned on this is what you see when you're just looking straight off we're on 40 meters uh, up on the top here there's some immediate controls for attenuation your preamp your roofing filter this has roofing filters included and your AGC controls Ooh, that is tough to see let me see if I can bring that in a little bit I did have a bit of trouble with the dimming of the radio that was one area I was uh, not able to lower that down. We'll talk about that as we get going a little bit later. Let me see if I can focus this a bit better for you. Come on now. There it was. Little sweet spot, right? <laughs> I just had it. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> okay, got the focus in place. All right, so again, um, your standard controls that you'll probably use the most right off the waterfall are right up top. The 3D waterfall is controlled by this 3D SS button, so you can take that off pretty quickly and easily. Oh, Tom wanted to see it without the 3D waterfall. There you go. Uh, two controls, center and free spinning for sliding up and down the VFO. Go back to cursor. And then you can fix it in the middle. There's a multi display. And so this is where you'd get like your audio coverage depending on what mode you're using. You can expand it to remove the controls. You can take it off of multi and you can expand it and get that full screen view. You can see there's a really strong AM station up ahead of me. I'm getting some weird uh, signals in today. I don't know if we're still experiencing that solar storm or not, but yeah. Span is going to control how wide um, the display is, so we'll we'll do that right now. We'll open her up. So that's extremely wide. Well, that's a uh, well, it's 1K span. That's pretty good. Let me do that. Let me break it down to 5K. Look at that. <laughs> we got something over here. There's a signal way down there. Leave it at 50k for now. Yeah, those are those two AM stations right there. You can see them, they pop right out. 
Okay. Uh, and then speed, you can control the speed of how fast the waterfall is. All right, so now going around the controls, let me get out of the way of the light because you're going to need to see this. I'll try to do the best I can to stay out of it. <clears throat> uh, and for those that are, I think people are commenting all in one radio. This is not a, necessarily a replacement to the 991A. This is a HF SDR radio. So keep that in mind as we're, as we're looking at this. Um, okay. So we're going to go through, they've got a noise blanker. Let's see if we can find a signal. We may have to switch bands here. We'll get back to that in a second. Effect of the noise blanker on. There's the digital noise reduction. Ooh, that's pretty good. How's the audio sound? Can you hear it okay? <laughs> 86 Dennis, yes, uh, it does. The S, the SS. I just turned it off because somebody wanted it off. I turned it back on because somebody wanted it on. <laughs> See, it's a split. It's split. People don't know if you know they like it or not like it. I, I think it's pretty cool. How's the audio though? Can you hear it okay? So this is with the DNR on. Yes, audio is good. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's do a DNR off. Okay. All right, so fine button down below, fine tuning. CS, I'm not sure. Step controls your how much step you have when you're changing frequencies. So band control, click the band button, as you'd expect, and you see the different bands of operation. We can hop down to 40, but it's already dark. I'm sorry, 20, but it's already dark. Let's do that really quick, just so you can see what it's like. And let me flip over to my, uh, let's get the beam pointed at 40. Try the CS tuning. I will do that. Let me go back. I will do what you guys ask today. If you want to see something specific. Price is $16.99 at HRO right now. Where are we getting all that noise from? All right, we'll turn the CS tuning on. Needs to calm down here for a second. 20 was really quiet. Now all of a sudden there's just a ton of noise on it. Let me hop down. Oop, that's for uh, faster. Oh, come on. You can jump bands a little faster if you go through that. Click the screen and then jump bands. 
or you click the ban button and then you can go to 10 meters uh, Don we'll go through the filtering too Let's see what's going on 10 there is a inner uh, I call it an inner VFO and then there's an outer VFO Oop, that's connected to the level. I don't want that. I had that set to frequency, and now I don't. I mean, oh, that's why. Okay, when you have CS turn turned on, see, I'm learning too. Um, it controls the level control for the SDR. See the SDR level? Let's knock it way down. Uh, let's turn off the preamp for a second. Ooh, that's nothing. Back to the preamp. I think this is just a, yeah, that's some noise. Trying. Uh, uh, we can check FT8 in a little while. We'll save that for the end. Because that's really just flying by the seat of the pants. Because this is the first time I'm, I'm getting this on the air. So uh, I don't want to, don't know what to assume on that yet. Let me go back to 40, actually. There were signals on 40. We got a lot to cover in the functions button, so I'm going to I'm going to go through the outs the outer controls first and then we'll do the uh, the function button because there's a lot in there. Okay, so let me turn CS tuning back off. We don't need that. Memory controls, click the memory button. You can uh, add memories, remove memories. VF, uh, V and M switches between memory mode and frequency mode. So we'll leave it on VFOA. There is an A and B. So you can have two different sets of frequencies there. There is split control, which you would assume there would be split control. Mode button gives you a whole bunch of options on mode. We're obviously in lower sideband. Oh, and there is a, a timeout on those buttons too. They will disappear on you after you push the button. Dawn says the FTDX10 is not in the 991/7300 price range. No, it is. It is more expensive, and uh, it is an HF only radio. And we're going to. There's a lock button as well. Two of the buttons I don't know yet: TXW and Zin. We can come back to those. Okay, so some filtering options. Let me. Let me f I'm sure there's FT8. Where is it? Right there. Yeah, a lot of FT8. We may come back to that. I don't know what that is. My kid's probably turned on the treadmill. Okay, let's put some filtering on it. Okay, so the notch filtering is pretty uh, interesting. You don't necessarily have to click the button if you start playing with the uh, the notch control down here. It will need immediately bring up the notch, and you can see it on the screen, which is pretty helpful. So you can control the notch if there's a high, you know, some kind of repeating tone that you want to notch out. You would just use that knife edge to control where that notch is. If you want to take it off, you just click the button again. Contour can help you adjust. Oop, wrong one. There we go. Let's see if we can. Bit of shaping on the signal. You can hear it on the audio. And if I take it off, woo, too loud. Yeah, 
Yeah, the notch is cool. I saw that. I was like, hey, that's nice. That's a nice notch. That's a nice notch you get there. Uh, the contouring is pretty cool, too. It kind of smooths it out if they've got some kind of funky audio. Can you change the color of the waterfall? We'll, we'll dive into all that. I haven't even opened... Well, I did. I clicked it. I clicked the function button. <laughs> We're going into the function button here shortly. Uh, there's a lot to it. And then, there's, of course, there's a shift and a width control, too. So you can, you can adjust... the size and shift of the filtering for which frequency you're on. So if we wanted to close him up a little bit. He's on 2400. We narrowed it down. We'll open it back up to 2400 and you can hear. It maxes out at 3000. Oh no, wait, 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 wait. wait. Open, max out to 4000, that's great. I'm glad we checked that. We should see some appreciable difference between the AGCs. So let me try that. Let me go through fast. Not a lot. I don't know what just happened to the, uh, the noise. I think the kids turned something on. Hey, Bear, thank you for the super chat. That touch lamp. He turned it on again. Okay, let's go into the uh, the functions menu. We'll show that a little bit. Okay, so a lot of your controls are going to be right through here. So you click function, and you got a lot of stuff you can do in here. So let's let me let me get this as in focus as I can. Now we can get a bit closer because we don't need to see the other controls. So hold on. Lot to take in, lot to take in. Let's see. Let's adjust that focus again. Yeah, so the one thing I'll cover right up front, because I, I couldn't figure this out. I don't know that it's possible. Maybe there's a software patch coming for this. So you have major radio controls in the middle here with the little buttons, and then below you have kind of larger radio setting type controls. Ethan, is this going to replace my 7300? Um, this is a loner. So I am. Uh, I'm, I, guess I'm, I guess I'm trying it out, you could say. Uh, let me go into the display settings. So down here, display settings. If I click it, there you go. There is an LED dimmer control, and you're supposed to use the function button or your fingers to control the dimness. But am I am I alone in thinking that it's not dimming at all? Look, it's not dimming, is it? I don't, right? It's not. I can't dim it. And I need to dim it to get rid of that flutter that you're seeing. That's really more of a video thing. It's a uh, it's a really good looking radio. The screen's a really good looking radio in person. But it's not doing anything. So I, I thought I was I was wrong. What makes <laughs> what makes it kind of interesting and why I bring it up is because the about this manual control um or the, the how to read the manual explicitly explains how to adjust the dimmer. Like that's the, the first example that they give. I think the kids set off the fire alarm too. Boy, it's just a crazy day to be doing a live stream. That's a little crazy. Somebody's fire alarm is going off. 
Okay, so we've got major controls like the level. So when you click this, that sets the function dial to the level. So if I, you got, you see how like noisy it is? Well, that's because the level's at plus one dB. If I drop it down or even go lower, that'll soften the levels a lot more. And I am using the RF gain to, to bring it down too, but it's, um, it seems like it's not doing a lot. At a certain point, the squelch kicks in, and then it—that's the squelch level riding up. You can see it here on the, on the gauge. Not sure what's causing that. Let me go back to the uh, function. The brightness of the LEDs above the VFO changed when you changed the settings. The brightness of the LEDs above the VFO. Oh, is that what it is? It's just changing the... It should be the whole thing, though, no? No. It should be dimming the whole thing. Oh, well. We'll leave it at that for now. We got more to look at. Um, peak controls. This controls your, your... Ooh, look at that. See how bright that gets? <laughs> we'll drop that back down. Back in the function. Uh, color. Ooh, there you go. There's your color options. I'll let you guys take a peek at that. Let me know what color you want me to set it to. Oh, it's, it went away. How about a nice blue? Well, after the first look, I'm glad the wife. Yeah, let's see. Marty, what, Marty, you went with the FTTX 101. Yeah, you've got some more options there. This is a, a smaller unit. I believe the FT101 also has a pre-selector. This does not. Make the scope transparent. Okay. Oh, dimmer. Is this? Oh, we, that was it. That was what we wanted. I went through all that just for the... Uh, I could have just clicked the dimmer. <laughs> Contrast. Ooh, ooh, hey. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Uh, M group. Oh, this is for memories. Mic gain. Mic e uh, EQ. Limiters, AMC levels, Vox gain, Vox delay, anti-Vox. Those are all controls you might need, might not need. Radiated power or RF power you can adjust. So here's your adjustment for out power output. You can leave that at Hundy. Monitor level if you want monitoring on. We're not in CW, so the keyers off. Break-in, full break-in is off. CW speed is set to 20. CW pitch is 700 hertz. Uh, break in delay, 200 milliseconds. DNF, huh? What's that do? DNF. Okay. So, down at the bottom, you know, I showed you the display settings. Well, if you go to radio settings, CW settings, operator settings, these are all going to be a different page to work through. So, under radio settings, that's where you have settings for the specific modes of operation. So, you can go to single sideband mode. And you can control it with the function button here. There are different options for single sideband. Your source can be mic or rear if you have something connected. AM mode settings. So instead of having, like if you're familiar with the 891, this is more like the 991 where you have the pages to work through. Or maybe the I'm confusing that with the 891. Uh, DNF, do not futz with this. That's probably accurate. Now, again, it's a very good manual, so all those things that I'm not uh, answering correctly here. Digital noise filter. Is that what? No, that's DNR is the front control. Well, we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, FM, PSK, digital or data. You're going to want, let me see if that's in here. Hertz. Burp, 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 burp. Data mod source is the rear. Data select mode is data. Okay, keep that in mind. I may pull up WSJTX just for the heck of it and see if we can get this plugged into something. Mode is RIDI. Settings for RIDI. P 
PSK. Ooh, does it do... Okay, so it supports two different kinds of PSK, BP, BPP, BPSK, which is what you'd likely see out there, and Q. And you've got range control for that, because this will decode PSK, and it will do RIDI. We got a question on CW, if it'll do CW decode. Uh, does the PSK data have a dedicated width setting? Interesting, that's a good question. Uh, let's go to PSK data. Well, it does have the width of whatever. So it has a width control here on the a physical width control on the outside of the radio. So right here is where you control the width. And that is what you would use if you're in a digital mode. So you can just use that. We can, we can play around with that a little bit here. Do the Mars mod live? No, I don't think I will. <laughs> I don't think I will do that. That would be crazy. All right. Uh, what else we got? CW settings. So a whole bunch of CW specific keyer types. CW weight. For those of you that are, this is a lot of options for uh, CW actually. Your memory settings for CW are here. If you wanted to load these up with your QSOs for a contest. Decode CW. Heck yeah. Okay, we got to figure out how to make that work then. Operator settings, general, text time, uh, transmit timeout timer. Did I already work my way down? I did. You can use you can use the wheel, the function dial to move up and down too. Narrow, noise blanker width, noise blanker rejection, beep level. I'm looking for the 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 beep um the the baud rate. I wonder if that's it. Cat rate. Oh, cat rate. There you go. 3800. So we may need to remember that. <laughs> yeah, let let's let's make sure it works first. Let's see if we can find some CW. So let me let me put it into CW mode. I actually want to see that, so let's do that right now. Uh, I guess I should do lower sideband. There we go. I see CW. Let's change the span to 20. We'll hone in on a Well, we can see where we're, um, you've got your zero beat control right there. See the little dots that are popping up? Now, how do we get it to decode? Oh, I will look at the manual while we listen. Yeah, let's do the 3D waterfall. Come back, station, come back. Aha! CW decode. Page 57. I thought it might just pop up. I might be magical. Uh, okay, set the operator mode. We did that. Function knob, CW speed, and turn the function knob to closely match the speed of the received signal. Okay. Uh, okay, push the function mode. Touch decode. Aha! Okay, so you got to be on the frequency then for this to decode. Let's find a nice, big, strong signal. Let's 
That's uh, FT8. Where did all that great... We saw a bunch of CW. Oh, wait, there's somebody. I don't know if that's coming through on the video. It might be. Now, I will tell you, it's flashing a little bit. That's because of my camera. It's not the screen. The screen is not looking like that at all. The screen's very clear. Ooh, that was somebody. There we go. Again, I'm looking at the zero beat right here. We're waiting for them to come back so I can zero beat it. That's some very fast CW. It's actually kind of hard to use the three, the three D. There it is. Okay, got it. We probably have to adjust the uh, speed. Somebody's saying, adjust the CW filter. Set the CW keyer to the CW speed. Okay. Where is the keyer? There it is. I'm not getting it. I'm doing something wrong. I think I've got to change the... Uh, hold on. Let's go back. There was another setting I needed to do. We'll get it. I want to see this work. That guy's sending pretty good, too. And then touch the CW speed. Yeah. To closely match the speed of the received CW signal. Okay, how fast is this guy going? Oops, sorry. So when I again when I'm selecting CW speed, it's changing the control of the function knob to that to that function. What do you think he's going at? We got the zero beat. And there's somebody else in there, I can hear him, they're down in the dirt. Shouldn't CW be on well I can try. No! Why did you do that? I gotta get off this for a second. Let me go back. There we go. Let's go to this guy. That's too slow. Come on.
Well, I thought so. So, again, I'm on you, and I've tried lower. Usually to make CWD code to work, you're going to have to play around. Saying CW speed in the upper right hand corner. Decode level to six. Aha! Here we go. And it's about 15 words per minute, maybe a little less. Doing all I can here. What's your width? 400. You do have to, it is zero. That's what this is right there. That was the first thing I did. Mm, 700 hertz, somebody says. Okay, we can try that. Doesn't look like it gives me that. I got 800 or 600. We'll do 800. Uh, if you click decode off, it takes the screen off. normally on 100 on that for the CW decode bandwidth. You want more narrow to let the decoder hear. I thought so too. <laughs> That's what give it the adequate RF gain. I, I've adjusted RF gain. the pitch. It's 700 right now. There is no R filter, but there is the filter control here. And there is the mode, which we already did. Oh, R filter. It's on 500. The roofing filter is what you mean. Uh, I played around with the RF gain. Yeah, so that that's also a good point. You're you're going to be dependent on how good a signal you get into it, so we can do the decoding. And I just may have too much noise on 40 to to make this work. So I was hoping for a big, strong signal, like this guy, maybe.
We're in CWL. We tried both. Not that it matters, but... All right, anyway. It, that's uh, VFOB. VFOA is on uh, CWL. We'll just play around with all these until we get it. How? What's this top out at? How much does this go? Okay, we can get off of decode. Uh, let's see. Six, decode level four. Decode says off. No, <laughs> that's the button to take it off. <laughs> that's to get you off the screen. I hear you need a cloud low. Okay, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, take it easy, Mike. Let's see, what else do we got? Let's go back into the function. We hit much pretty pretty much everything. We can record if you have a SD card installed. We did CW settings, operator settings. Let me turn this down a bit. DSP filtering width. Transmit audio. Oh, parametric equalizer, so you have that. You can control that. Nice, that's cool. You have different levels for your parametric. Max power. Okay, and there's your power controls for 50 meters and 70 meters. 70 meters, huh, okay. Control for where your Vox comes in. Tuning, there is a tuner built into this. We already went through display settings. You can hook up an external monitor and you can push how oh. Okay. That's kind of a tiny resolution. You don't need a big monitor then. SD card connection. Ooh, okay. We'll leave calibration alone. There's your reset control if you want to do that. If you wanted to reset for some reason, it's under extension settings, reset, reset all, which is what I did when I got it. <laughs> Whoop. Jonathan says, it looks fine on my monitor. Good. Thank you for all. Oh, yeah, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Just passed the technician. Hey, congratulations. That's Thermal Dog Outfitters. Uh, do you have to have an SD card in the radio to be able to decode? You shouldn't have to. Um, for the heck of it, let's get... Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to try to... We're going to go ahead and try the FT8. I'm guessing that if we tell it it's an FT101, it should work, but we'll see. Okay, it, it doesn't see it, which we would expect. Because we don't have it connected. Uh, settings. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Let me get out of this one for a second. Let me change my configurations. I'll just take the uh, X5105. Ooh, come on, buddy. There we go. Okay, we are
ports, it is these guys. 8 and COM 10, so we're going to start with 8. Uh, it is going to be a Yasu. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to throw the FTDX 101D at it and see what it does. What, what did it was it eight? Did I get the eight or the six? We'll see. Eight or ten. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Uh, eight and what did it say? It was thirty-eight. Remember we did that. So I'm gonna go eight. I'm gonna go uh, data bits eight, stop bits one, none on the handshake. And? Doesn't look like it. No, let's change it to data mode. It's 3000 Hertz in data mode. Uh, let me check the uh... before I did the live started the live stream I did a, uh, a full refresh restart on it refresh we're gonna check the baud rate So, whoop, mode data. Maybe here it might be on another screen. Data rear, fine. Daki. Mode. Okay, I think it's under operator settings. General. Yeah. So let's let's change this. What's the max that it can do? 3840. Let's go down to 96. I think that's what my USB port's set to actually. Wrong one. 96. It did something. It paused for a second. And it changed the mode back to, uh, okay, so we're gonna do cat. Mode is data packet. What if we just added upper sideband and fake it? Let's try that. Nope. No hurry for leaving the frequencies. Double tap. Have one on order from Portland. Can't wait. It should key. Yeah, it should key for a second. Uh, I'm just trying to get the receive going. Okay, let's try 10. Oop, didn't like that. Data packet. Fake it. No more. Make sure you're following along with me here. So I'm back in the uh, general display. I'm just looking through these. I'm just looking through these to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, just out of curiosity, I'm going to check what this is set to. Ninety six hundred. Yeah, so if you're ever curious like what you need to set in FT eight, let me let me show you what that looks like. Or whatever digital mode. On your device manager for I'm assuming Windows, you right click on one of the ports, bring up properties, properties window will have a port settings, and there you have ninety six hundred, eight bits for data parity, uh data bits, no parity, stop bits one, flow control none. Right? So you just replicate that. So you say eight, one, and none. 
Uh, for the heck of it, what if it's the 991? How about that? I don't think so. Don't think it, it, it. And again, I'm throwing this at it, and I don't think it's WSJTX has to be updated to support this, or we'd have to go in and do Omni Rig or something special, and we'd have to find something that specifically works with this radio. And we can see the FTDX10 is not in here yet. Uh, yeah, we tried the FT101D. That was the first one we did. So again, COM port eight. We set it to 9600. It doesn't like that. Eight one none. Uh, we want it to cat. We want data packet mode, and we want to fake it for now to keep it simple. That kind of happens when it's a new radio. It, we're not. We, we haven't sorted out all of the uh, all of the different settings for the radio. So we're trying to like use something that maybe works. Somebody said use the FTDX1200. That's not in the list. It's okay if it doesn't work for this. It'll work. It'll work at some point. There's a reason why it's got one USB cable out the back. Steve Campbell, thanks for subscribing. 891? I don't think so. Change. No data packet. Make it USB. I mean, we can do that. It's okay. Uh, it's not gonna, the manual's not gonna tell you in, I mean, it, it might, but most likely not. And it's okay. I mean, like I said, it, we're, I'm winging it on this like day one when this thing came out, right? The baud rates are the same. I've got it matched already. It's no big deal. It, it will work. Don't worry. The, it it will it will happen i promise the manual does have a section but i already looked at it and it, and it didn't give me a lot to go on uh so yes there there you go you got to make sure you have a uh virtual com port driver which i do for psk operation ppsk Uh, Civ address is pro could likely be the problem. Civ address could be it. If it does that, don't Jesus not do that? I could be wrong. If it's a Civ address, then we've got to go into um, we got to use Omni Rig. But it's okay. Like I said, I didn't really want to post this video to do digital modes. That that deserves its own video at another time. Yeah, it's okay. We don't have to go any further on that. What time is it? Yeah, we're about an hour in. Uh, is there anything anybody wants to see specifically? Something that I have not covered yet? I'll do digital modes another time. I'll monkey around with it and make it work. I probably have to get Omni Rig running or something like that to, to trick the sieve if that's the case. Does it come in gold? Ooh, I wish it did. Uh, yeah, it's not a replacement for the 991. So if you feel like you bought a 991 and you're bummed out, don't be, it's not a replacement for that. Stop bit to default. Yeah. 
I had all that. Waterfall on number seven, please, audio menu, please. Waterfall on number seven, please, audio menu, please. Nine nine one has two and seven. Yes, it does. Color seven with the waterfalls. Sure. Okay. Color seven. And we'll do the three D uh three D waterfall there. Can you expand the waterfall? Yes. Ooh, that looks nice. I don't know what this will replace, if anything. Yesu sometimes will say this isn't a replacement to this, 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 and the other, and, and you know, that that's kind of what they do. Um, the reason, there's probably a couple reasons it's not decoding, and they might be due to my noise. Um, I can change the speed of the waterfall. There you go. That's about the fastest it'll go. And the, the, the refresh rate on the screen is because of my camera. It's not because of the radio. You can go like that. Whoa! Think we can decode this one? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta change my waterfall when I'm in the decode menu. Yeah, it did something, it did a colon. <laughs> Hello from JA. How you like AC radio? I like AC radios, and they always come up with interesting things. Set the true. We should go higher. I hope he comes back. Oh, oh, I see what. I see what the level does now. Oh, I hope that station comes back. There he is. Let's give it more level. As long as it's not like the 890. No, the menu system is not like the 891. Let's keep giving it level until it... Okay, that was it. Well, maybe. That was K. Hmm. Let's back that off a bit. Oop, sorry. Let's see. We were getting something though. We needed to get something, but then also get the right things. Mm. 
Now, I will say, um, CWD code is can be hit or miss. And I have a high noise floor. See, it's, it's keying off of my noise floor. There you go. We got it. Okay, so it was a combination of set the level high. That was his call anyway. Roger. There you go. Okay, so we got it. Took a little while. Awesome. It's the lamp. <laughs> it's the lamp. It just took a, a, a 20, 10 over, 20 over S9 uh, signal to, to make it work correctly. And yeah, we had to have the CW speed. So I'll, I'll walk through what I did again for those of you that may watch past the hour point and want to know how to do this correctly. Uh, with the decode off, right, before you even go to decode, hit function. And you'd make uh, the function button set to CW speed. See how the little white box goes around the CW speed? Then you hit function again and you go to decode. Now, the function dial will adjust the CW speed, okay? So now, when the signal comes back, you just adjust the CW speed until it's the relatively right CW speed for the, the station that you're hearing. You will also sometimes have to adjust the decode level. So the decode level, you'll have to adjust as needed, depending on how intense or strong the station is. Uh, this... This is a growler, but it's just full of water. So see, I lost him. He's, he came back, but he, I'm not getting him. So let me... Ah, I did it again. So that is... You got to be kind of Johnny on the spot with the speed. Filter is too wide and the AGC is chuffing. Uh, that's true. Filter is... Let me go back here for a second. Let me expand that. Go back to decode. The roofing filter is at 500. I had it at 400 before, which will probably help it out. Um, and AGC is auto we can make it fast if you want but when you go to expand it or not expand it it pops up those four buttons there at the top below the uh, zero beat and the, and the meter pretty good though yeah silent uh silent service i would agree obviously you you want to get to the point you can decode on your own. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. You're talking uh, to Mayhem. You're talking about the enhanced port on your 991? This is a loner. Is adjusting CW decode speed a norm for other radios? Uh, yeah, generally. Well, no. Uh, I don't believe I have to do that with my Elecraft. I do have to adjust the decode level, though. Oh. Hmm. Okay, let me see if there's an enhanced. Enhance. Ah, ha, ha, ha. You are right. There is an enhanced option. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I thought I tried this, but let's do it exactly. Exactly. 
I don't think so. Not yet. Handshake should be hardware. Oh. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, Mayhem, I did the uh, I did the enhance. I'll show you exactly what I did so you can I'm doing that in parallel here. Um, well, we'll we'll hear. Too much volume. So it doesn't. So ten is the enhanced. Ninety six hundred eight one. I'm probably blowing you all out. <laughs> Sorry. That's max volume. That goes up really high. Okay, so uh, 8 for the data bits. Stop bits is 1. Hardware is for handshake. Uh, cat is what we have selected. We're using upper sideband, although I'm assuming it would work in data packet. And split operation is fake it. Oh, we got it. <laughs> okay, let's try. Yeah, buddy. Okay, we got it. And it's reading. Oh, I'm in the wrong mode. No, I'm, I'm in the right mode. What's going on? Let's try moving it to data. Uh, data packet. That's good. Okay. Uh, we are... There we go. That's the problem. There's your problem. Why was there two 40 meter options in there? I must have added it for something. Alright, let's see what it looks like. Look how fast that waterfall's running, though. Check this out. Let's change the span to 5k 10k there you go that's a fast waterfall uh width how narrow is this receive it's kind of narrow see how narrow it is Needs more contrast on the 3D. That looks better. Um, searching for alien life. Yeah, PTT is RTS. 500 hertz filter is on. Aha! Thank you. That was why. Roofing filter was on. So, yes, you can both change the bandwidth, which is what I did, and the roofing filter. But now it, like, knocked itself off frequency. Did I click it? That's why. There we go. Good catch on the roofing filter. 
Uh, want to see my comm settings? I will show you. It was the FT-101DX. So good news, right out of the box you can use it. Uh, and somebody in the chat, I think it was Mayhem something? Mayhem something with the, with the good catch. Let me go back and find him. Big shout out to him. I think I lost him. He was on the Discord side. Uh, basically, his point was that you got to use whatever your computer notes is the enhanced COM port. So on mine, it's COM port 10. Whoop, right there. So COM port 10 was what I had to use. Uh, that port is set to 9600. USB is set to 9600. COM 10 selected. Data bits 8. Uh, st stop bits is 1. Handshake is hardware. PTT method is cat. I, leave, I put it on data packet, and I left it on fake it. And hardware handshake. Yeah, and it mayhem. Got it. Thank you, buddy. Okay, let's find a spot here. Um, I will dial back the power just to make sure. I'm going to make sure my antenna is tuned for this frequency first. Okay. Ah, uh, here we go. And test, test, test. Did it? I'm checking to make sure it's not picking up my mic. Change to USB data packet is for FM data modes. Really? Okay. I'll trust you. So it's still picking up my mic. That's not good. Um, oh. I didn't finish the uh, the configuration here. Settings. <laughs> Audio, it's got to be line and speakers. How's that do? Okay, well, we got that. It's not right. Hang tight, W zero ACS. It should be these two, but it doesn't like it. It's keying it, but it's not taking the audio from the computer. Set both channels for output. In input set to rear. Yes. Bap. I don't think that's right. No. It's it's not putting out the audio. And try with RTS. Now I'm not going to do RTS. Click the tune button and see if it modulates. No, it's it's coming off the mic. Why would it be coming off the mic?
Eh, I'll leave it. I'll leave it for somebody else to make the video on. <laughs> is that all it is? RTS instead of cat? RTS COM port to 10 doesn't work. Doesn't work. It's okay. I'll let somebody else uh, handle it. I mean, I can PTT it, but it's okay. I'll let somebody else do the digital. They can do it on their channel. We'll, uh, we'll leave it at that, guys. The mic is... I don't want to set the mic to rear right now. That's okay. Like I said, we'll let somebody else do it. It's easy. I mean, we're obviously close, so uh, somebody else will come up with the YouTube video on that. <laughs> so that's the, uh, that is the FT DX10. Pretty cool radio. Looks nice. Good looking. That, that looks good with the waterfall like that. Turning the volume down to see if the uh, WSJTX goes away. Marty said he'll go pick it up. All right, Marty, you go pick it up tomorrow. It's a cool radio. Stick with the AC. No, I think it's I think it's fun. Uh, I just don't dig the 3D waterfall. Yeah, but you don't have to do that. It's just there. There you go. There's your regular waterfall. No big deal. It did not affect the waterfall. Uh, okay. All right, I will leave it at that, everybody. If you're interested, go to the Ham Radio Outlet. Link is in the description to check out the FTDX10. I am Josh, KI6NAZ, and I will talk to you later. See ya. Now you got to wait a second. <laughs> wait a second for a go away. Got to wait. Give it enough time that this stream will end appropriately. So I'll see you guys uh, Saturday. I'm still doing my live stream Saturday, and we'll have some more fun then. I'll post the show probably tomorrow.